So here we have a patient with a persistent fully occluded catheter uh, lumen on the right with the red lumen and a flush patent but difficult to draw blood in the purple lumen. So I already wiped the red, but I'm gonna go ahead and wipe the purple now. And remember to maintain A and TT. And this is our drawn up all to place. I'm going to administer to the purple lumen that is patent first, and I'm only going to put in about one ml or even just 0.6 ml. Double check my math on that. What is the volume dead space inside of a barred power pick double lumen five French? Okay, so 0 0.4, 0 0.4. So there's, there's plenty in here. So I only put in 0 0.5. We're going to cover that. We clamped it. We're going to allow the TPA, the alta place to work on that. Now you've got to work on this one. So maintaining A and TT. I'm going to take an empty 10 cc syringe. Okay, let that dry. And then I'm going to apply negative pressure because I want no liquid in this catheter. I don't want to take too much time, so I'm gonna switch it up real quick. I'm gonna clamp the line to ensure that we still have a vacuum in place. And then apply. And you're gonna see, hopefully, there it is. Do you see how the vacuum sucked in the amount of volume? So it only sucked in 0.5, so almost half of this catheter might be filled with a clot, we'll see. So I like to do that popping technique, but we're gonna make sure that we get rid of all the air, pull out the air, agitate the chemical so that the all the place will actually reach all the way to the clot. Now I'm gonna sit here, clamp it, and we're gonna wait. Now we wait. All right, so this is the 15 minute check. We're gonna to check to aspirate to see if any blood will come out or if that full occlusion is still there. Doesn't seem to be. So I'm just gonna agitate some more with those pops. So we are at pressure neutralized at 1.1 ish. So we're gonna see if it's going to move at all for us closer to one. So I'm just gently nudging it forward and there is no movement. So what I like to do is just agitate the liquid, a little chaos to get that chemical out to, and this might help a little bit, move that chemical out towards Zero movement from 1.1. So we'll just keep it there and give it another 15. And we're keeping this filled with cath flow for now. While we're waiting for this to work, I would like for this to continue to eat away whatever fibrin sheath might have developed. Uh, even though it was fully patent, it didn't feel obstructed at all. However, I would like to try to get rid of whatever leftover residual clot might be developing on the intraluminal um, inside of the uh, lumen of the catheter. So we're gonna let that sit until I'm done for the day. Either they're gonna go home with this sitting in them or we're going to uh, make it patent and then we'll aspirate the blood out.
And I may even switch this out for a, a 5 cc syringe. That way I have more negative pressure to agitate it even better. But for now, we're gonna leave it for another 15. And we'll do that. So this is the 15 minute check. Not much has happened, so we're gonna keep on keeping on. So at 1.1, it went in a little bit, half a millimeter, half a millimeter. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, look at that. Half a milliliter. Let's see if it'll go in another 0.1 ml. Oh yeah. So what I did as I pushed in whatever was left over of that cath flow. So now I put in some fresh cath flow. It's not leaking anywhere, so it's definitely creating an opening at that site. So we're gonna wait another 15. All right, so this is the 15 minute. We're going to check to see if we get, and I'm gonna ask very slowly because I don't want See it? Mm -hmm. All right, so we have blood return. Now, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to aspirate and waste. So when I aspirate, you're gonna see a little bit of blood. There it is. So we're gonna waste all that. That'll be my safety holder, keep it clean. And we are gonna do a hard pull Get rid of whatever clot might be in there. And then I'm going to. Nice. Okay, see how much we can pull out to create a vacuum. And so this is the exposed clot. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna hold pressure and see what else we can pull out of there. That old clotted blood. Give me a cough. <coughs> Take a deep breath in. Hold it. And then relax. Not the big breath. Good. You gonna cough for me, please? <laughs> so I'm just holding that negative pressure, trying to suck out as much of that old clot as possible. So I don't. I'm, I'm trying my best not to push in all that old clot. Not that it's gonna be dangerous for like. That's not. You see, it's like jelly, right? It's, but it's like stuff might have grown in it. So I'm trying to prevent like infection if possible. Got blood drop. Look at that still. Still move I still see movement. Sometimes. Yeah. I still see movement. So we are going to keep holding that negative pressure. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna clamp it. We're gonna allow that out. How much clotted, declotted. And then we're going to apply the cath flow again. And you should see it getting sucked in. Oh, okay. It neutralized. Oh yeah, look at that. Nice. Look at that. 
pull this out. We're going to waste this. To try to get rid of. So what I'm going to do is flush this line. Feels That's pretty good. patent. Feels pretty good. So what I'm going to do is do a few more flushes. I'm only going to do this a few times. Remember, maintain the ANTT technique so you don't contaminate the site. And then. And clear that line so that we can give the rest of this TP this all to place. And we're gonna administer the rest of it and hold it and try to get rid of whatever clot might be left over. So we're gonna do another 15 just to make sure we're all we're gonna pull back the path flow from that site. I'm actually gonna keep this here. Get an empty. 10 cc syringe. We're gonna aspirate whatever was sitting in there. Flush your line. Okay. And then we are going to waste. Cool. So whatever was left over, I'm going to pull that out. Flush that line. I can No, I'm good. There we go. Now we're going to give it another clean because I don't like to see blood on my hub. Okay, a clamp. Clean that site, full 15 seconds. So today we're gonna use the Nexus TKO because, or needleless connectors because she's had reflux issues and so we're going to use this to mitigate those complications. So if the nurses or she or family members or whoever's helping forgets the clamping sequence, this anti-reflux will assist. Now, even with these, you still want to clamp the proper clamping sequence. So flush, not to the, not all the way, a gentle flush out and then clamp. You still want to follow that clamping sequence. Gentle flush. At the, at the very okay. last, but for the most part, you want to you want to really push that clot out of the way every time. Okay, so we're gonna take a. I'm gonna. All right, so for this one, I'm gonna show you how to do the push pull method for drawing blood. Take out the needleless connector. Gonna flush. Very smooth, very patent, very good. And so we're gonna not contaminate the stem, but hold the, the bully. And I'm pointing it down so that gravity will pull the whole blood down and the diluted saline portion will float up to the top, the less dense saline. And these are sterile gloves, just to minimize contamination. It's very easy to move. The less dense saline will be at the top and the whole blood will drop to the bottom due to gravity. And so I'm going to push the blood back in very gently. I'm not forcing it. I'm gently re-transfusing her own blood. That way we don't have to waste this blood. So we already wasted like 20 ml. I don't want to keep wasting any more of her precious blood, so we're gonna save as much as we can, prevent iatrogenic anemia. So from here, I'm gonna clamp. 
what happens is that the whole blood at the bottom now is the homeostatic blood or the, hemocon the appropriate hemoconcentration pushes it back in so there's no saline to contaminate the chemistry. Thanks to my friend Kalin, I remembered. We need to go yellow first and lavender last. So I'm gonna unclamp. And do you notice how I'm tipping it here? It's because I don't want it to hit the very bottom. I want it to roll off as much as it can to the side. Like that. And then you wanna hold pressure there and continue to draw blood. You wanna give it a couple seconds because you want it to fully normalize that pressure inside of that tubing. So remember it's an exponential decrease in negative pressure so you have to give it more time towards the end, which is the most painful part. And then gently roll, respect the blood cells. They will rupture, they will hemolyze if you're not gentle with them. Another technique is to allow gravity to support you, the, that blood from slamming to the back. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna angle it away and then we're going to watch where it hits. You see that it didn't hit the bottom very hard. There's minimized trauma. Let that fill up. All the way. And let's see. And then release. And then we're gonna do the same thing for lavender last. There we go, we're gonna insert it sideways already. And then we'll watch it hit the side over here. So it's rolling down and not hitting the bottom of the tubing, traumatizing it. And we're gonna let that negative pressure normalize. Remember, we need to give it more time. And let's say it doesn't fill all the way. You're halfway there. You don't wanna sustain this negative pressure. So you wanna clamp immediately. Decompress, you heard that that little bit of a suck, that means that we're decompressed. Move all this out of the way. We're gonna roll, roll the blood. And then, clean this one more time. Okay. Just connect that there. And now, get that up. Don't forget your alcohol caps. Now, patient is good to go.